Few men think, yet all will have opinions. To be is to be perceived or if a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? Truth is the cry of all, but the game of few. It is impossible that a man who is false to his friends and neighbors could be true to the public. Of all men living, priests are our greatest enemies. If it were possible, they would extinguish the very light of nature, turn the world into a dungeon, and keep mankind forever in chains and darkness. We have first raised the dust, and then complain we cannot see. A ray of imagination or of wisdom may enlighten the universe and glow into remotest centuries. To be is to be perceived. The thing of hell and eternal punishment is the most absurd as well as the most disagreeable thought that ever entered into the head of mortal man. To be a good patriot, a man must consider his countrymen as God's creatures and himself as accountable for his action towards them. The world is like a board with holes in it and the square men have got into the round holes and the round into the square. The most ingenious men are now agreed that universities are only nurseries of prejudice, corruption, barbarism, and pedantry. I had rather be an oyster than a man, the most stupid in senses of animals. God is a being of transcendent and unlimited perfections. His nature, therefore, is incomprehensible to finite spirits. Every knave is a thorough knave, and a thorough knave is a knave throughout. All men have opinions, but few think. Our youth we can have, but today we may always find time to grow old. The hour by long use comes to see even in the darkest cavern, and there is no subject so obscure that we may discern some glimpse of truth by long pouring on it. Christianity neither enjoins the nastiness of the cynic, nor the insensibility of the stoic. The question between the materialist and me is not whether things have a real existence out of the mind of this or that person, but whether they have an absolute existence, distinct from being perceived by God and exterior to all minds. Where the people are well educated, the art of piloting the state is best learned from the writings of Plato. So long as I confine my thoughts to my own ideas divested of words, I do not see how I can be easily mistaken. That neither our thoughts nor passions, nor ideas formed by the imagination, exist without the mind, is what everybody will allow. He who says there is no such thing as an honest man, you may be sure is himself a knave. Religion is the center which unites and the cement which connects the several parts of members of the political body. Whatever is immediately perceived is an idea and can any idea exist out of the mind. The same principles which at first view lead to skepticism pursue to a certain point, bring men back to common sense. In short, if there were external bodies, it is impossible we should ever come to know it. And if there were not, we might have the very same reasons to think there were that we have now. For my own private satisfaction, I'd rather be master of my own time than wear a diadem.